Well, this is a very interesting one. For the q and I was asked two questions by the audience. And these two questions were based on two particular aspects. One, this is a personal issue. Most young people after school, let's say for example in the medical profession, at this point I was talking with pharmacy students. They know that they after the schooling, they'll go do their internship. After the internship, they're left out in the cold. They have to look for a job, find a way to fend for themselves, which is ultimately the fate that we've been offered by the society as it is. And therefore, we have to find a way to make the best of it. So as I go into this, one key thing that I would ask you, check my video on managing transition from internship into employment. And I think that there are some insights that I also shared there that are important and it would be a good reference point for you as an individual beyond just listening to the answer to this particular question. And the question was, I am passionate about a particular field of practice in the pharmacy industry. But as, other than that, when I leave my internship, the 12 month internship training, then I'm out there and the opportunities that are coming are not in line of work that I am passionate about. So let's say, for example, I'm interested in pharmacovigilance, but the roles that I'm getting are not only, let's say, for example, in retail pharmacy or under regulatory affairs, whatever it is. The thing is, there's a mismatch where you're interested in and the opportunity that you're getting. Do I pursue my passion and stay home hoping I'll get one? Or do I go for the job that is available and make a living out of that as I explore alternatives? This was my answer to this particular question. And I think this is a question that we are all contending with. Most of young people are contending with it. One key thing is after your internship, you're out there in the cold and you need to make a living. You have responsibilities to meet. You have obligations to meet. And you have to be available and ready to find a way to balance the dynamics of the society. First thing is, you know your passion, which is amazing. Most of us, we get into it after internship and even into careers without having a passion. You already have an interest in it and you think you're able to go into that line. That is amazing, the starting point. Two, you have a job that is at stake for you, that is available for you. You need to ask yourself, what are my priorities at this particular moment? Ultimately, if you don't manage your finances, your finances will manage you. The reason as to why I'm saying this is, you will get manage, you will fail to manage your finances by getting something to keep you going, ensuring you have a kind of a sustainable revenue stream. You will get out there, take time hoping that you'll get the job you're hoping for, and as in the poor moment, you are consuming whatever resources you had available initially, which means it will get to a point that you have no buffer, and with no buffer, you'll take whatever comes your way. Disparation is the last enemy of passion and interest and personal development because with disparation, you get to take whatever is available for you. And when you take whatever is available for you, you have no room to extend yourself and see what other dynamics. You are, it's a survival mode. And I don't think you'd want to be in survival mode. So the first thing is take the job that comes your way, provided you have opportunities to do it and you have opportunities to explore other areas and other interests. How do you do that? I said, for example, the case I talked about was on pharmacovigilance and you get a role in a community pharmacy. You're dealing with patients firsthand. Therefore, you're able to identify challenges that they're contending with from a patient safety perspective. You're able to advise them. And in so doing, you're able to develop patient cases. These cases are going to be impactful in your career because what I'm thinking is you do that work, but you are lining it to what my interest is in pharmacovigilance. I'm looking at patient cases, what are the adverse events, what are the safety signals that are being reported from, let's say, pharmaceutical companies, the communication to the regulatory authority. You can do the reporting for the regulatory authority. You can collect the evidence and analyze them at your local level and write reports about it in your, the goodness technology is there again. LinkedIn has newsletter option. You're able to create your own blog on WordPress, on Wix site. Create that content about that area where you are interested in, and that is about building the brand of you in the area that you're passionate about, that you're interested in. YouTube, create a video about those kind of things and make it consistent that you know you are learning as you keep exerting yourself, applying yourself and learning so that you build the profile of who you are in that particular career line. And as you're building yourself in that career line, you're also knowing more about that subject matter because you continue learning. When you wait for disparation to settle in, then you take a job, Chances are you will be doing it as a means to an end. It will be a job, not a career, not a vocation, not a passion, and not a mission. So you'll be doing it for the job. Therefore, you're not exerting yourself to see how can I make better of this? What can, can I improve on this? What data can I generate to be a leader in that particular space? So take the job, but use it to develop yourself in that other area. That is on the hope that there is some kind of correlation in terms of community pharmacy. There's correlation on patient safety and pharmacovigilance. You can generate data, write opinion pieces, and be a thought leader in that area. If there's no commonality, let's say, for example, in the kind of work you're doing on the other, 
then what you need to do is do the work diligently but create time for your own personal development and i'm glad about this because in the company that i work for there was a training that i did in terms of leadership development and also recently did the mckinsey forward program there's intentional learning and having learning intention by asking yourself i want to do this because of this and this and therefore in terms of my professional career aspirations i'm able to create an hour or two a week to learn by that learning i'll be learning in my areas of interest if i'm learning in my areas of interest whether they are correlating with the job i'm doing now or not i'm still able to create content i'm still able to grow myself as an individual as a thought leader as an expert in that particular line therefore when opportunities present themselves that are in that particular domain i'm able to tap into them that is important and the other thing is during this period as you make these learning intentions you also beyond just reading and there's this kind of ma matrix in terms of our learning 70 percent of learning is through experience 20 percent by engagements and networking from peers 10% is through academic programs, courses and all that. So take the courses you need to do. Self-guided learning, you take articles, you read the articles, read books, network with people and learn. Then 70% is through experiential working. Do the job where you can do it. That is important for you. But in this case where it's not related, get an opportunity to network. Send a message to somebody in a role that you're interested in. Let's have the conversation. Make it be an opportunity for you to learn. By building a, a relationship with that person, by connecting, by networking, that person knows that that is where you are interested in. You are still building your portfolio as a professional. And therefore, by that portfolio, when an opportunity presents themselves, that network, that connection is able to guide you on how to go that journey and also to link you with the opportunities that might open up pathways for you to work mainstream in your areas of interest. It is important for us to do that. And I hope that question helps you. I, I understand more of the dynamics around you. You can maneuver passion or making a living. And the most critical thing, managing your finances. Otherwise, your finances will manage you. You have nothing, no buffer, nothing to go back to. You do whatever comes your way. And when you do whatever comes your way, you let your passion go out the window. And that is not the best place to start off your career. So you have a buffer. And when you're done with your internship, you have some spare, spare savings. Use the savings, yes, but use the savings as you go. Negotiate your salary and negotiate with the bare minimum in terms of when you're negotiating the salary, ensure that you negotiate for what can sustain you. If you're working for a business, they're making money, they want sustainability. How does it become sustainable when even your salary is not sustainable? Can you pay your rent? Can you move from work, day home to work? Can you pay your, let's say, for, can you buy the clothing that you need? Can you sustain your life, livelihood? It might not be substantial, yes, but at least you can get the bare meaning from that and negotiate in a way that you're able to make a decent living, a fair living, and you're able to exert yourself and apply yourself in learning. Then in terms of advocacy without creating enemies or adversaries, one of the key things in terms of advocacy, people believe that advocacy, I'm advocating for this, there are people who are anti it. Yes, there are people who will be anti the same kind of thing that you're advocating for. But you have to start from a humane, substantive point. That is the key thing that I talked about in the initial one. Policy and advocacy is about serving humanity. If you're serving humanity, chances are we all have a shared interest. It's just that our perspectives and perceptions are different. So we need to adopt the epic model. We need to establish empathy. Who am I going to engage with in this advocacy agenda? What is their interest? Probably we have a common issue. What is their perspective? If their perspective is different, how can I communicate with them that resonates with their perspective but helps us achieve the common end goal, the perspective, outcome that we're hoping for in terms of the policy draft the implementation the resourcing that we need to ensure that happens we need to establish empathy then after that we need to know what is the purpose of this advocacy why am i doing it and that is the starting point humanity we are serving humanity in our advocacy and policy making work are we able to do that if you anchor the purpose link it with the empathy by understanding what that person hopes and intends to achieve from this discussion you are at a better level already then after that move to the insight what data do you need to inform your argument that will make the person not be pushed away from you, but also to see themselves as an ally who can work with you to achieve that common purpose by understanding them. Finally, you need to communicate and have a conversation. It's not me telling you what to do, but it's you and me coming together and seeing how do we do this better? This is my perspective. This is your perspective. How do we adjust? What are the areas of commonalities? What are the areas where one of us has to compromise? Who compromises? Then we make it work. In certain situations where that kind of a negotiation is not possible, bring a third party. The third party would be the convener, bringing people with different perspectives and different approaches. And therefore, in that kind of a caucus, we're able to get a common nexus. The key is we have to start from establishing connection and knowing that 
we are here to do something for the greater good and the greater good is to serve humanity i don't think there's anybody who ever gets out of out of the, the space of work to make other people's lives miserable if you're in the policy and advocacy space so if that is the case then ask yourself if i'm working to make life people's life bearable and more fulfilling and meaningful then definitely all the people that i'm engaging with should be with that particular mission how do i make them see my perspective how do i get to understand their perspective come up a common consensus get the insight that are supporting both dimensions then move towards a common having a conversation that conversation comes with compromises but at the end of the day we achieve a common goal i hope this makes insight it makes makes it more helpful to you get the insights are imp- insightful to you learning opportunities and you get to challenge yourself and see how do i become a better professional and a better leader in my line of work so if you enjoy the conversation again subscribe to the channel let's keep learning and share it with your network so that we have a movement of change appeals in our communities and finally for the video that i mentioned the first question that i asked about passion and making a living out of your career you look at the video that i did on managing the transition after internship post internship managing that transition i'll share it again in the comment section so that you can read it in the description and follow up the link and watch more about it let's learn let's get better thank you so much and have a good one we'll talk again next sunday